Hey you guys, how are you? It's been a little while since I did another episode. Um, this year has been a pretty challenging year again as we're trying to get our life back in order in 2021. I know I did some early episodes of just, just minor stuff with my car, but now I'm getting back into tech gear. There's actually a new camera that's out. Uh, let's rewind back a little bit. Uh, late middle of last year, Sony came out with a camera called the ZV-1. The ZV-1 was actually pretty cool. Cool. It was made for a uh, made for individuals like myself, um, light content creators. It had a a swivel screen, three and a half inch. It had a very decent mic, and the only downfall with it was the fact that it had a fixed lens, uh, a, a fixed lens, meaning that you couldn't put your own lens in there. And the focal length of that lens is between 24 and 70 millimeters. And the really poor part about that is that when you're trying to vlog, 24 millimeters just isn't quite wide enough to capture your surrounding areas of the story you're trying to tell. So that was kind of a downfall for this camera, for me at least. So what I did do was purchase a wide angle lens converter to make the width even wider. And it, it, was, it worked okay, it wasn't great. Um, the center, of course, with any fisheye lens, especially the lower quality ones, the center is pretty good. And, and it was, and you can see in some of my other episodes, the center was, was pretty good, but the edges all the way around, and, and it wasn't natural bokering, it was just very fuzzy. So here we are, third quarter, meaning September of 2021, what did Sony do? On August 31st, they released a update. They updated with the ZV-E10. And this time around, they put a couple neat things in this camera. First of all, they now use an E-mount, meaning that if you, have, if you own any Sony lenses, now you can put your own lens on here, any E-mount lenses. And this camera, and I'm not gonna go through the full specs of these two cameras. I'll go over them lightly, but not in full great details. This camera here now, you can put it put on your own lens, which now I use my favorite lens of my 10 to 18, which now gives me a really wide, uh, wide feel, which I really enjoy as I create content, especially outside. Uh, additionally, they kept the articulating screen, which is for me is kind of important because when I'm out or about, I like to frame myself, not the guess that, oh, did I get it right until I go home and download the footage? I can do that right away. Additionally, they put in the updated sensor. Now they actually use the uh, APS-C sensor in this. What does that mean? This, is, this does have a larger sensor than this particular camera here. Not that the ZV-1 did anything poorly or bad, but just the fact that now with the E10, the ZV E10, it's just a larger sensor. What does that mean? Your ISO can go higher. Uh, both of these, I think this one goes, I mean, on, on paper, on specs, it says it goes up to 50,000, 51,000 and change with regards to the ISO. And this one here goes to 24,000 and change. You really have to chop that in half because you really rarely do you put your ISO that high because your quality of, of, of your recording or your, the pictures that you're taking, it's gonna be very grainy. It's not something you're gonna enjoy. So with that, you're gonna to wanna to pretty much cut the ISO in half and that's probably the most usable point at best. Um, both of the cameras has a, a decent battery life. The new one here, the E10, uses all of the same battery as the A series, the A60, uh, 100 all the way up to the 6600. So it's the larger battery. I think you get a little bit more runtime, but I haven't truly tested that out yet. But I have batteries for both because the ZV1 uses all of those RX100 uh, Mach 3 to 6, 7, whatever it is now. Uh, same type of battery. I have multiple of those because I do own a RX100 uh, Mach 5 uh, as my initial, one of my initial vlogging cameras. But uh, one of the biggest downfalls is a camera, which is, which it is what it is with all cameras, you're gonna have to get some type of mic for better audio. I finally bit the bullet and upgraded to the Rode wireless mic system. That's why I sound, my audio is a little bit more clear now. But prior to that, I do use this type of 
extension mic on top of the camera, a hot shoe mic. Uh, this one's by Sony. I'll email. I'll I'll put in the description below the exact model number. This one works pretty well. I have the dead cat on top, but it does work okay. But it's not going to be as good quality as the wireless uh, Rode mic set, which I'm using right now. Um, both both of the cameras are are very good. I'm not. I'm going to say for my usage, for a semi pro consumer, not pro at all, pro consumer. Um, I think. Either one of these cameras would do you fine. Uh, day in and day out for video recording, either family or vlogging, both of these units would do fine. With the advantage going to the E10 right now because of the fact that you can use your own lens if you're in the Sony Eco, Eco lens system already. So that would help out a lot. But if you don't want to invest in lens and just want to dive into something, the ZV-1 is also the way to go. Again, my only challenge is that I like the feel, the, the, the view of the, of the field to be wider and I had to get an adapter for that for this particular camera. It does have an actual uh, zoom. Um, you can look that up. I think it's a 10x. I could be wrong. But um, overall, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, the zoom actually, it's, it's actually 3.8x, not 10. My correction on that, uh, as my page here says as I'm scrolling through. Um, the maximum aperture for this particular unit is 1.8 to 2.8. So with the, even the lens that comes in, it, it's going to give you good bokering. Both of these units, um, cameras does have that feature. It's called product showcase, where if you take an item and just shove it right in front of the camera, the camera will know how to focus on that, on that product that you're trying to show off of. So that's very good. So the 1.8, 2.8 really helps a lot. And with this particular lens, particular lens is an F4 lens, it's that particular feature of the camera still works out pretty well. And I do have various other lenses I can use to take that full advantage of the bokering effect when, uh, when you put uh, something right in front of the camera and it really focuses. Um, the body, the body of these two camera, cameras has been criticized a lot. Uh, saying it's too plasticky or, or it's not as, as metal as it should be. Uh, it is not weather resistant because due to the fact that the mic's on top, this you can tell that there's open holes here for the mic. Um, it's not going to be weatherproof, meaning that moisture can get in and also it's not dust proof, so dust can get in. Um, but with that, the body itself, it is plastic. It's some type of composite plastic. It looks, it kind of feels like metal, but Let's be honest here, it's not metal. Both of these cameras are in pretty much a reasonable price range for this type of camera. Um, the ZV-1 here uh, goes for in the store, I think it's uh, $699 now. I've seen them on sale for $649, $629. Originally, this camera was $699. Uh, this camera here with the kit lens, if you get it with the kit lens, is $799. For the body itself, is $699. So they're very comparable. Um, it just depends what you're looking for in the camera. I have both and I'm going to keep both along with my A6300 and A6500. These will add to my, my family ecosystem of cameras that were used by Sony. I enjoyed it a lot. I gotten used to the interfaces and that's that's more than half the battle. Knowing where all those hidden features are. Um, so both these units does pretty well for me. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please email uh, uh put it down below or even reach out to me um you know i really appreciate you guys support as i continue to try to grow my channel in 2021 and going on 2022 while it's not a day in and day in job for me i do have a day job like my family this is just a hobby of mine i enjoy looking at tech and reviewing tech and just certain things out there um these sony cameras i did also oh lastly i did purchase the what they call the vlogging stick uh, which works out pretty well. It turns into a tripod and, of course, a, a selfie stick. But the biggest key is that it, this is a Bluetooth stick, so it will sync with the camera to control photos uh, and recording a video and zoom in if your lens allows it. Um, and, and minor little features like those to help out the, the, your experience of using it. Um, again, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these cameras. I'm not. I'm not supported by them. This is all my own dime. And um, I, I think that 
you know, these cameras are, are, are good for what it is. It's a, it's a really good for the value, especially now Sony finally stepping into the fact that both of them has articulating screens, which are huge. It, it was missing for a long time there with the RX series where you flip up or the later series of the A6600 and so forth, you flip up. I just didn't like it. I like the articulating screen much better and Sony got that right. Um, well, stay safe, everyone, and have a good one. Talk to you soon.